Sporting Wales podcast. Supported by Dragonbet. Your go-to for Welsh sports news and views. Hello and welcome to a new week and a new episode of the Sporting Wales podcast with me, Geraint Tardy. This is where we review and preview the Sporting Wales week with the help of special guests and our sponsor, Dragonbet. Sporting Wales is co-founded by Gareth Anscombe and Alice Cuthbert. And you can find our Sporting Wales magazine in various sport clubs, gyms, leisure centres and lots of other venues right across Wales and online. Now, every week, as I said, we're joined by two guests, and this week we have Alex Cuthbert back to join us, and former Wales Scarlet's Bath and Cardiff Fly Half, Reese Priestland. Uh, Reese, first time on the pod, uh, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, you excited to be here next to Cathy? Cannot wait. Really can't wait. <laughs> the enthusiasm's here, definitely. Um, obviously retired now, uh, we've seen you popping up on TV doing some punditry, you enjoying that? I'm enjoying it, yeah. It's, um, it's a decent commitment, you know, working full time and then... You know, I was out in Paris this weekend, left half four on a Friday morning and back at 12 o'clock last night. So, and then back in the office this morning. So it's, it's a decent commitment, but no, I do enjoy it. And in terms of kind of, you say the office, lots of fans won't know, but what are you actually up to from like a Monday to Friday these days? So financial advising, uh, did my exams whilst, whilst I was playing, um, did all my training. So um, yeah, just trying to get some clients at the moment, but uh, yeah, really enjoying that. It's, you know, meeting people find out what's important to them and, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I, I'm really fortunate. I'm really enjoying what I do. And I think, um, you know, that's the biggest challenge when you finish something like rugby is like, yeah, going into something that you can see yourself long-term doing and, and really enjoy doing it. So I'm, I'm very fortunate. I'm in a good company and uh, I'm loving it at the moment. Preparing for that next chapter, I find really interesting with sports stars. So when did you actually start thinking about that then? So... My plan was, well, my, my career was a little bit different probably. I went off to uni, um, never thought I was going to be a rugby player. Um, so finished my degree um, in economics and then, you know, rugby, I, I got my first contract. I thought, oh, I'll get found out soon enough. Um, <laughs> this will last a couple of years and yeah. I'll be back. I'll go to work in the city, which was always my plan. Uh, rugby ended up lasting a lot longer than that, about 16 years. So um, whilst I was up in Bath, I had the opportunity to do an MBA, a Master's in Business Administration. So did that over two years, um, really enjoyed that side of it. And then I ended up coming back to Cardiff just because probably my network's a bit stronger here than, than it was in, in Bath. And um, yeah, just did, did my exams whilst I was, my, my financial advisor exams because, you know, I, I knew I wanted to be in finance, but then speaking to a few um, ex-players who'd gone into financial advising, they generally seemed happy about about life. And yeah. uh, I looked more into it. I was like, yeah, I can really see myself doing this long term and really getting a, this. This can be, you know, as good a career as it, as as rugby was for me. So, um, yeah, it, you know, I, I I spent a lot of time investing myself in terms of qualification and stuff like that. And um, yeah, thankfully, I've landed in something that that I can see myself doing long term now. And talking of tapping up. Clients and stuff. Is it the rugby boys you go to first in your phone book? Anybody need any help? <sighs> Not if they're getting offered the same contracts I was offered last year. <laughs> <laughs> Fair uh, enough. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it, so it's all sorts really. Um, young sportsmen, if you know, you, the early you can get, you start putting, getting all your, your what's, what's the saying, your ducks in order, is it? Yeah, you know, ducks, ducks in a row. Yeah, ducks in a row. row. Yeah, yeah. You know, the early you can start on that journey and, and planning for, for, for sort of later life and um, getting that discipline into you, the, the better. So, um, yeah, all sorts of clients really just trying to figure out um, at the moment who, who who I can sit down with and add value to. Yeah, great stuff. And Al, how was your weekend, mate? Good? Yeah, good. Yeah, busy. Watched a lot, an awful lot of rugby on the couch in the house. A uh, lot of NFL as well. Uh, and obviously just with the kids. Um, uh, partner Sarah, she was out in the town. So uh, I had, uh, had the kids all weekend. I know Sarah. She does tuck you up every now and again, doesn't she? She's, she's out quite a lot with the girls. Yeah, a fair bit. I've got them notched down, don't worry. So uh, I've got a couple <laughs> of golf trips, but yes, ready good. to good, add good. them the days up. Good, good. Uh, Osprey's win, that, that was a nice way to end the weekend as well. Yeah, it was a fair play. You know, I think uh, they, a lot of people would have, would have written them off, um, especially the team that we, we sent out in the young, young squad. Um, the boys said that it was like breathing through a straw out there. It was terribly hot. It was tough as hell. The, the, the worst conditions, I think, the boys said they uh, ever to play. But came through, you know, three tries in the last seven minutes to win. Yeah. Uh, now we got home last 16 against Sale. So uh, exciting exciting to be in that knockout game. And um, I do think we may send them down Brewery Field. So uh, that should be good. Oh, interesting, <laughs> interesting. Uh, we've got lots to crack on with today and Dragon's Bet. James Level will join us uh, a little bit later on as well. Um, it seems to be really busy when it comes to Welsh sport at the moment constantly. Um, and Lewis rees he did the dirty on us a little bit, Al, last week. Because we record this, Reese every Monday, right? And Lewis's news came out on the Tuesday. We were gutted. Um, but 
did did you think that was coming? Because it was kind of mentions of it in the past, but no one took it seriously. So w- was it a shock to you? Uh, yeah, it was to be fair. Um, I think I don't think he knew he was going until the Monday. Anyway, I think he was obviously just trying to get a feel for obviously the the, the contract that he was offered uh, for going out there. But I think you just got to take your hat off to him. Really, fair play. You know, it's a big gamble for him, but for me, I think for him, it's a win win in terms of he's twenty two. He's got an opportunity to go out there. He's going to be. You know, looked after incredibly well the ten weeks, and he's got a great opportunity to to try and you know work his way into the NFL. It's going to be extremely tough. You know, the percentages of players from internationally going over and actually claiming a spot on uh, even practice squads is, is quite low. But you know, I think for me, he's in a win-win in terms of worst case scenario. You know, if it doesn't quite go to plan, you know, he's still got his rugby background, and I think most clubs would snap him up when he, when he comes back. But great opportunity, and for a twenty-two-year-old to go live in Florida now, you know, it's, it'd be some life. Yeah, so I, cause I remember speaking to him over two years ago in the autumn camp and I was asking him what he's going to do once his contract's up in Gloucester. I was like, are you coming back to Wales or whatever? He goes, no, I'm going to go to the NFL. I was like, okay. Just thought, uh, like a throwaway comment, but fair play to him. He's like gone for it. And um, yeah, like like Cathy said there, I think it's a win-win for him. You know, he's he's such a talent, such um, physically so, so gifted and um yeah, he's, he's literally going out there and living the dream. So it's going to be hard work, but uh, very jealous of him. Yeah, so 10 weeks is the is the pathway training camp. Yep. And if he makes it from there, yeah, Al, there'll be like an academy squad with more money for him. But And then his 53-man squad, then, then he's into the serious, serious money, the 750 yeah, a year that, or whatever. Yeah, that'll be an awful tough ass. I think, so he goes out there, I think, for the 10-week training camp. And then what they do is they pick, there's about 40 of them out there, international pathway players gone there. They average on six players get out of that into the the next pathway squad bit, and then that's when you you can earn a little bit of money. He'll be on, you know, be one hundred and thirty grand. I think my, my agency was trying to say. And then if he gets onto the wider squad, then that's when you can start earning some big money. But over there, average salary in the NFL is about two million. So you know, we're we're talking big numbers. But then once you get into the fifty three, that is when you're talking massive money. But I think. He'll have a couple of years to obviously get into that, and yeah. hopefully he gets every opportunity. And like we said, this ten weeks is massive, really. You know, he's got to learn the game. I, I know he probably knows quite a bit, but just the intricacies of the te- technical side of it is going to be massive, and it's going to be completely new and alien to him. So it'd be interesting to see how he goes. Now, I don't know if Reese knows this, but um, Gareth Anscombe texted me and said, "Ask Cuthy about him on the pathway." So you've actually attempted the pathway program yep. for the NFL, yeah? Yeah, I did it in 2016 uh, to travel to Tottenham Hotspur training ground. Met a guy out there who was part of the Jaguar Jacksonville Jags, um, and he, they were saying they wanted me for a tight end. Which sure. I, you're which more quite of a lo- cool. I think you're more of a long snapper. Isn't long you? snapper, yeah. <laughs> but um, it, this was like sort of par halfway, sort of near the end of Six Nations, and I would have only probably had about four to five weeks training. It like Zam's obviously having ten weeks. I would have only had four to five weeks, and I don't think it would have been enough time. I was out of contract. I was a lot older, you know, I was 26, 27. So, um, and I needed a, a few operations at the time, I think, as well. So, but it was a great opportunity to go and, and, and meet the guy, and, you know, and. I enjoyed the uh, the you know the occasion and, and um, the chance to, to to do it, but yeah, it was good fun and like like Bruce said, very jealous of Zam Too Fair. It's going to be going to be good fun. I really hope he makes it because it would be so amazing to have a Welshman playing in the NFL and involved. But it is a tough task, as you've explained there. Um, I think Reese is fair to say instantly a lot of people said, "Oh, it's about the money this move." But it, I don't think it is at all. It's something that he really wants to do and now is the perfect time for him to do it so young because if it doesn't work out, he can come back to, to Japan, to France, to Wales, to England and, and play rugby again. Yeah, exactly. And if you look at Zam, he doesn't really... He sort of breaks the mould, doesn't he? He did that documentary. He's, you know, he's much more than a rugby player. He's a, he's a personality away from me. He's, got, he's, he's, he's a brand, really, isn't he? Mm. So um, I think this just adds to, to Lewis Rees Zam the brand and... Um, yeah, you know, eventually it might be financial financial move, but for now, I just think he's he's got the opportunity to go out there, try something that nobody else has succeeded in from from rugby. Uh, well, definitely rugby in in the northern hemisphere. Yeah, yeah. and um, you know, he he could be the he could be the first. So I think that that's probably something that really excites him. Yeah, because he signed with Rock Nation, which is Jay Z's agency. So the brand deals will definitely come if there's a certain level of success out there. You know, um, the connections Jay-Z's got, you know, it's going to happen, simple as. But financially, you know, even if he comes back to play here, I'd imagine he'll get a better contract than he's been offered in Gloucester, which is sort of rumoured 300k a year there. Yeah, it'd be, um, 
obviously depending on how well he goes out there, he he's going to have a, any option really. I think Japan would be probably a good option. You know, he's for him, and he's never really seemed to be. And you know, he wants to be more than that. He wants to be well known, not just in rugby, but he's it was well documented in, in his documentary, wasn't it, about how he wants that world fame. You know, he wants to live the high life and. You know, this is the start to what he thinks that could help him get to that. You know, I think rugby is probably a little bit stagnant at the moment in terms of the way it is, I guess, commercially. And I think, I guess, for him, like Reese said, um, commercially, it's going to be massive, isn't it? For from a UK guy going over to America, he's you know they're going to love him out there. I think, and if he puts his head down and works hard, he he could really get some reward out of it. Yeah, let's hope he does it. I think we all wish him well from from here anyway. And, um, you know, if he's back in 10 weeks' time, then we benefit from that, don't we? But hopefully for him, he does it. It was kind of, um, it was my, you know when Take That split up back in the day and all the girls were upset? And then when Zayn left One Direction, they were all upset. Him leaving Wales for me the other day was that kind of feeling, the shock and kind of thinking, I'm never going to see him score a try for Wales again. But maybe we will, maybe we won't. Reese, what do you reckon? Do you reckon he can go far out there? Do you think he'll do it? out that 10 week program um, he's, he's definitely got the physical ability to do it like like Cuthy mentioned earlier like I, I watched quite a bit of NFL and it's the interest, intricacies of of, of a, it's such, such a specialised game um, but you know I, I out of anyone this, that could succeed it's, it's probably him so you know I, I don't his point of difference is big isn't it his speed is is up there with the top level in sport so that's a, you know it's a great starting point, but like we said, the the technical side of that game is massive. You know, you got kids that have played it from. It's like someone from NFL trying to come to rugby and yeah, be like, yeah. you know, trying to figure out. Will, will he have to put weight on? Do you think, or is his kind of is is weight okay? I, I don't think so. There's you have, Turner, isn't it? You have got that. is he? Yeah, that's what he was mentioning. I was watching the NFL on the weekend and um, Sky Sports. He was chatting and uh, they were saying about how he he was looking at a kick return. Uh, okay. But no, yeah. there's there's also you, you have got some massive, massive. If he was as a wide receiver, you've got some huge units there. But you've also got some smaller ones who yeah. are just quick. So, you know, you don't have to be a certain size or or, or height or, or whatever. There's there's role there's, there's room there for 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 different shapes and sizes. A little bit less than rugby. You don't get the the extremes. They're all you know, they're all fit, good 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 athletes. But you do get the odd smaller ones. So I, I don't think size being a, an issue for for him. Okay, good. Well, we wish him well. Um, also, last week, the same day, uh, Warren Gatlin did actually name a Six Nations squad as well. Um, it's going to be a new cycle, as we know, after the World Cup. But um, Alex, first of all, you, you're not involved in this squad because you've had lots of injuries. So, from a personal point of view, give us an insight into how kind of you felt on the day when you kind of not announced in the squad, and how you'll find the next few weeks with Six Nations fever kicking about. Well, I already knew I wasn't going to be in. I haven't played <laughs> yeah. in a long time. Yeah. Um, I, thought, I thought you'd retired. <laughs> Not named it, mate. Come on, mate. I've still got a few more years left now. But um, no, obviously, it's a very, very young squad. You know, it's um, well documented in terms... I think it's a squad that I think the Welsh public are going to have to be patient with in terms of uh, maybe gaining results or, or how well they do, obviously, within... The Six Nations, um, you know, this week's going to be a big week in terms of settling them in and, and learning the game plan and how they want to play. I, I just don't see the usual Warren Gatlin's teams are usually quite physical, want to get over gain line. I, I just don't see too many ball carriers, too many players to do that. So whether they change the way they want to play in terms of maybe a bit more speed and pace, trying to get wide channels, trying to get their, their main weapons, you know, people like Mason Grady, I think they need to get him involved as much as possible because he's probably one of the best athletes in that squad. So it'd be interesting to see how they how they work that and, and how they want to go forward. Average age is 25, Reese. Uh, five uncapped, eight who have never played Six Nations before. So it's the first kind of venture into that. It will be challenging, but like, have you are you excited about a kind of a young crop starting the cycle and going through it, even though it will be difficult for Wales? Yeah, I think so. I think if you look at it, I'm not too sure who else they could have picked. This is the situation we're in now. Um, and to be fair, a lot of those boys are in there. They, they they deserve to be there. They're not just, oh, actually, let's give a young guy a goal, maybe come good in four years. A lot of these younger boys have been playing well. Some of the better players in, in Wales this year. So, um, yeah, I agree with Kat. It's going to be tough. The Six Nations is always, all, always tough. You know, you've got France, Ireland, who are, you know, very, so two, well, some of the best teams in the world. Um, you know, England will fancy their chances as well. So, and Scotland have been playing well, haven't they? So it's... they're a set of teams, Scotland, aren't they? That's yeah. the trouble, you know. They're, they're playing well, so it's gonna be a tough game that opener against Scotland. You know, because like you said, they, they, they're a solid team. They've been together for a few years, and we've got the opposite in a full house principality. Yeah, we'll be behind them, but that's no no foregone conclusion at all. 
Well, I think the one benefit for us is that I don't think Scotland know how we're going to play. So we know exactly how Scotland are going to play. You know, they're going to play on the, the front foot in terms of their back row and obviously Finn Russell pulling the strings. Now, they got a pretty solid 23, haven't they? Whereas Wales, I don't think they know. We probably don't really know our best 15 you know, going into that game. So it'll be interesting. You know, we're going to probably try and catch them off guard. But like I said, I think the experience is massive in Six Nations in, in, in big games like that. And um, we are lacking that. But then we're lacking... We're, what we're lacking in that, we're gaining in a lot of young players in terms of the fear factor. They're just going to go out there and want to play. And they're playing well. You know, there's a reason why they're there because they're, they're doing their job at the club. So yeah. We'll talk about number 10 in a moment, Reese, if that's okay. But Gatland has said today, um, write us off at your peril. These are his words. Uh, do that and you could get caught with your pants down. Um, nobody wants that, do they? <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, is, he says basically after that in the quote that, you know, if we beat Scotland, we go to Twickenham. If we can get a win in Twickers then it's all about momentum in the Six Nations. But then they've got to go straight to Dublin after that as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's that gamesmanship from Gatlin from the off and he's, he is a master at it, to be fair. Yeah, two big ifs there. The first two games, they like Scotland have probably had the upper hand recently and they're a far more settled squad. Um, and England, you never know what you're going to get get with them. Um, but yeah, um, he's, he, to be fair to him, he's always he's always talked about momentum and it's, come, it's proved true in the past where, you know, Teams, Welsh teams haven't been, um, they haven't been back to do that well. They get that one win, and it is a bit of a, a snowball effect then. But like I said, that that first game against Scotland is going to be so tough. So it's, it's a massive if whether they get that that victory. Yeah, David Jenkins, our new captain now, obviously um, second youngest captain. Will he be there this this week? So I think he can be there to what half the week. Yeah, it's, it's how it usually works. I don't know if yeah, it's changed, but they they'd be there Monday to Wednesday, and they right. go back to there because it's the IRB, IR, yeah, some in some regulation. So every club has to release them for for three days, and then um, they'll go back and play because the Premier playing this weekend. Yeah, um, so he'll be there Monday to Wednesday. Yeah. So how that's going to affect preparations though? That's not ideal, guys. But, but that's that's why they want players in Wales, they, they, you know, because they get access to them for the full two weeks beforehand. Yeah. But it's the same for Finn Russell, for example. He'll have to go back to Bath yeah, this yeah. weekend and Cam Redpath, people like that. So, um, you know, that's that's one of the big reasons that the, the coaches want players in Wales because they get the access to them for the full two weeks before the tournament. And, and that extra week makes a hell of a difference, isn't it, in terms of just whether they want to get the, the, the conditioning week in or, or, or knowledge and learning. I think that's what they're probably going to try and get a lot of this week. Uh, but but it's of. also as well, those those boys playing based in Wales, their focus is solely going to be on Scotland now, whereas these other boys come in for three days, do a bit of fitness, get beasted, do a little <laughs> bit of prep, because Exeter played yesterday. Well, if you take the Exeter guys, for example, they played ex yesterday, so they're not going to do much today. Well, they are in Bayonne as well, and they so won't do much today. Maybe a little bit Tuesday and then Wednesday. But they've got to focus on whoever they're playing on the weekend. So it's uh, it, is, it is it is a challenge for those boys based outside of Wales. Yeah. And a word on David Jenkins then, because you've got extra connections. Um, is he the right man to do this? You know, obviously Jack and Dowie are not, are not fit. Would you be in your choice for captain? He's doing a, a good job at obviously extra at the moment. I think that's probably why Warren's gone there and he's, he's a young lad. Um, I did think maybe... I thought Adam Beard or Thomas Williams might have been a, a good shout in terms of just, you know, going through the World Cup, um, playing a lot of games, you know, playing well. I think just maybe a bit more experience, but I think Dav would be a good focal point in terms of the future. And I think they just want to see how he reacts to, to being captain within the squad. I think that's just something to look at. He's done it before though, Reese. He's not scared to to name a young captain, is he, Gats, at all? You know, he'll, he'll go for it and say, but this is what I'm doing. Yeah, 100%. I, th I think there's definitely something about Dav. Um, I met him a few times and there's... You know, I'd be nothing but impressed with him. He's got like a hard edge, and he wants to get better. And you know, he'll, he'll, I think he'll drive standards and and bring everyone along with him. So, yeah, I think it's a good, good choice. Have you seen that clip on social media? I think he's playing for the under twenties, and he just walks through their team and nicks their water bottle. Do you know what I mean? He's he's going to put it about and kind of lead by example. That's for sure. Which is kind of which is quite encouraging. How does this affect the the starting eight then in the pack? Because if you're captain, in my head, he's starting. So does that mean Will Rowlands or Adam Beard don't start for Wales? Well, we were, I was chatting about this the other day. I, we, we were thinking maybe Dav could start six and then have Will and Beardy second row. And then you've obviously then you've got probably Wainwright and um, Tommy Raphael. Yeah. I'd say that's quite a good balance in terms of he's a good line-out option. So you've got that. Because six at the moment, I'm not sure who's going to be sort of playing there. It's just whether they want to play with tempo or with physicality. That's just the way they're going to go. I'm not sure. Reese, do you echo them thoughts? I agree with Gats, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it going to have to, they have to play differently, a quicker game, do you think, Wales? 
to match the physicality of the other teams in the Six Nations. Yeah, I don't think too much will change. There's, you know, they've got a, they've got a tried and tested way, and when they get it right, it's, it's very effective. You see them against Australia in the World Cup. You know, good strong kicking game, good defence, and and sort of capitalise on team on teams' mistakes. So, um, yeah, I, I I think they'll stick to to the way they have historically played. Okay, uh, the front row slightly inexperienced, but I, like you said, Reese, he hasn't had much to pick from. Um, Dylan Lewis being the one, kind of, kind of thought, ooh, I'm quite surprised to see him in, Reese. What's your thoughts on that? I'm surprised as well. Um, I watched him play for Quinns against Rassin. I thought he was unbelievable that game. Um, just what he, the work he got through around the park, you know Dills is going to give you that. Um, and he was effective as well when he came down and played against Cardiff. Yeah, for yeah. Quinns came off the bench. and did he, play, uh, did he play 80 minutes that game as well? Near enough. I think in, so, wasn't it? Rassin, yeah. yeah. No, he's um, still got the engine there. Yeah, and... Um, you know what I've seen of him. I've watched loads of his games, but he's been he's been decent this year. So I, you know, I thought I thought he'd be in the mix, but obviously they want to go a different direction now. So um, you know, I'd imagine Dills is pretty disappointed with that. Yeah, he tweeted saying something on the lines of that he was really disappointed and gutted not to be involved. Adam Jones, one of his coaches, of course, has kind of backed him as well publicly. Um, let's get to this one. This is the big question. Everyone Wales talking about this at the moment. Who starts at ten for Wales? That's the big question. Reese, you're the obvious one to come to first on this. Um, Kai Evans, Johan Lloyd, Sam Costello. Who would you kind of give the nod to? Um, I think I think Costello starts. I think he's been, you know, I haven't I am trained with the other two, um, so I might be a little bit biased. But what I've seen of Costa, he's he's like great player. He's he's well respected, well liked. Um, he's brave. He's got great skill set, and um, I know they think a lot of him in that squad. So for me, I think he he starts and is his. Jersey to lose. I know he hasn't played a lot of rugby, but I think he's got enough credit in the bank over the last, well, probably World Cup camp and World Cup. I thought he was good there. So um, I think he's, he starts. Alex, you're nodding your head there. Yeah, I agree. I think, yeah, he's um, a player that does, he's quite vocal, isn't he, for, for a young lad. He will tell the Fords, you know, where to be on, or, you know, why aren't you there in that sort of situation. I think they'll stick with him from the World Cup as well. I think they're going to back him. He'll be the 10 for, uh, for a while, I think. Because for, for us Welsh fans, I think the, the, the three we mentioned there have got on 15 caps between them. So we look at the, the tens over the years, yourself, Reese, Patchell, uh, Bigger, um, we were making a disservice some of there as well, um, Anscombe, Pro- of course. Probably Anscombe. Was. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So we've got four there that have got a serious amount of experience in caps there. So what's the difference, Reese, in stepping up from kind of European rugby or regional rugby to that international level? Everything's a lot more... You know, you're under the microscope the whole time. Um, there's a lot more pressure. You're playing against better teams as well. Um, and you'll be expected to go in there and, and, and take charge of the whole week. Um, but he's, he's got, he'll have good people around him and you know, it's important for him or whoever is at 10. They don't try and be someone they're not. You have to, you know, you have to be true to yourself. You, you lead that, that week and that team the way that you see, see fit. And um, yeah, it's important because they haven't got that much experience. They, they have the support, but they've got loads of, like, there's a lot of experienced players there. I know it's across the board, it's a young squad, but there are some players there with a lot of experience. Uh, the nines will take a lot of pressure off them. You know, um, Gar and Thomas especially got a lot of experience there. And then, you know, you've got people like Neil Jenkins there who's been there, done that, seen it all as a player, as a coach, and he'll be a huge influence on 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 all those tens there. So, um, yeah, I think it's just important they, they stay true to themselves. The pressure is increased, but um, you know they're all good players and, and all good blokes. So um, I'm sure sure they'll be fine. And Kai Evans, does he start 15? Al, uh, I think so. I think I'm not sure if Cam Wellett is fit. I know he took a bit of a knock in the yeah, last sure. game on his jaw. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think they'll probably go with Kai. You know, his kicking game is pretty solid. Uh, he's pretty good under high ball. Um, so they're probably trying to get a bit of solidarity there in terms. And then obviously on the wings, then you're probably looking at Rio and. Uh, Josh and then obviously Mason then I'm not sure where they're looking at him whether as a centre or as a wing but for me I, I, he just needs to be involved in the game You know, he's the serious athlete in that back line and he's the one that can do a lot of damage I think Do you know what was funny um, off mic the other day I was speaking to Gareth Anscombe and he was saying to me um, I reckon Sam is going to go 15 and then literally the next day the news all changed and he's gone so um, that's that it's going to be exciting I think I'm excited for the Six Nations but I think from what you guys are saying patience is what the Welsh public need with the team and just see how they grow through the campaign um, let's have a quick look back at the results of the European Rugby Vada the weekend Racing 48 Cardiff 26 Scarlets 19 Edinburgh 31 Lions 28 Ospreys 38 and then Dragons last night 9 Sharks 29 um, we touched on it at the start of the pod the Ospreys win uh, Al uh, the, the, on social media 
media today a song that they're singing in the changing rooms. Have you seen this, race? I haven't. They're no. all singing Angels, Robbie Williams. So I was just wondering, do you know the reason behind that song choice? Well, that's not usually our end of uh, if we win a game song. I think that must have been... There's, we, I think we had a few new caps, so I'm guessing that would have been uh, fr from one of them because it's an easy option to go for, isn't it? And uh, yeah, they must have jumped on the bandwagon. But yeah, that's an awful choice and that will be looked into when I get back. <laughs> so what's the, what is the usual Osprey song? Uh, I think it's Adele, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Uh, um... Oh, what was it? Don't win off the do. <laughs> yeah, one of them, yeah. We did it in Treviso, I remember, out in Benetton. The change room was open, they were coming out, and they're thinking, what are these boys doing? Singing them down. Yeah. yeah. Reese, was it, what was your kind of favourite song the, from all your years that, to, you know, celebrate a win with? To push uh, on this uh, Johnny Be Good. Johnny Be Good? Yeah. Okay. Rudry, Rudry? Rory. Uh, McConaughey. Um, after lockdown... I remember that was our song for the for the back end of the season. He'd, he'd get up and do a little cameo, and um, yeah, loved that. Great moments. And those are moments that stay with you. Do you know what I mean? From yeah. the dressing room, yeah. They're the best bits. So. Yeah, the VIP videos like that. I love it when you see that access is unbelievable. Um, Reese, how do you assess the the region's kind of European campaigns? Obviously, Scarlet and Dragons very disappointed. Uh, disappointing. Um, obviously, Ospreys. Cathy touched it earlier. They got a home. Last six home last sixteen. Um, we had one of those at Cardiff last year against Sale, like great occasion. Um, especially if they take them down the brewery field, they got a <laughs> decent <laughs> ch decent chance there. Um, I think Cardiff, you know, they haven't had any wins, but I, I've been impressed with them. You know, they've they've gone for toe to toe with some of the biggest clubs in the, in uh, in Europe. Um, they haven't been able to stick with them for eighty minutes, but they show real intent. A lot of the young boys um, having a real crack. Some of the players have been really, really good, and um, you know it, it. It's it's brought the supporters along with them. That you can see that they're all buying into what they're trying to build there at Cardiff. Uh, they're investing in a lot of youngsters, which you know the hands probably forced there. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think although they didn't win, I think they can be very proud of the, the performances they, they they've put in. Yeah. What about you, Al? I know you're actually involved in the Ospreys, but um, you know you've done an amazing job with the Ospreys because you've like that win last night depleted team and squad but to get that win that creates a nice bit of momentum going forward to hopefully what will be lots of the regulars like yourself coming back later on in the season yeah well, well we've got to try and get back in now haven't we but uh, <laughs> no we're, you know we're miss I think we got around 17 injuries first time sort of injuries sort of thing so um, yeah a lot, lot of boys to come back great win away um, obviously we had a good win at home against Benetton we had some tough teams in Montpellier away we took a young team out there and that, I think a lot of boys learned a lot in that game you know they, they taught us a lesson out there um, but yeah, we're, you know, we're happy home last 16 can't ask for any more really, can we? I think uh, if you're in European knockout, that's exactly where every, well, I always really want to be in those sort of competitions. So um, good time to come back fit for really. And what's the focus then? What's the main goal for that squad for the season now? Well, looking at the Six Nations squad, we've only lost four boys. So we haven't lost a lot and we've got a lot of boys coming in. So these next couple of league games, we're going to have near enough full strength. So we've got a good opportunity to maybe try and push towards top eight and then obviously just keep that confidence high going into the last 16 because last year we did really well up until the Six Nations and then during that period we didn't win a game and then we went into a Saris in a knockout game in the Champions Cup and we lost. It was just no momentum at all. So hopefully if we can just try and keep that, the boys come back from Six Nations, add in and uh, and go from there. So yeah. yes, it's exciting to, go, to yeah. look forward to it anyway. Very exciting. Okay, let's switch to football then, guys. Um, Plymouth Argyle 3, Cardiff City 1. Cardiff were ahead and then they just got battered basically. Uh, Swansea lost 3-1 to Southampton in Southampton. Um, tough task for them to go to Southampton. They're now second in the Championship, Southampton. 21 games undefeated and Russell Martin is their manager, of course, the former Swansea City manager. Newport County in the Welsh Derby beating Wrexham 1-0. Um, I don't know what you saw of that because I know, Rhys, you were out in Racing anyway, but an amazing atmosphere in Rodney Parade um, Boyle got sent off at 18 minutes and changed the shape of the game and Newport deserved that win as well and quickly I want to ask about um, derbies from a player's perspective you could see from the Rodney Parade crowd that it meant something to them for players does a derby win mean as much as it does to the fans Reese? I think it does Def definitely does you yeah know, you know you, yeah. Wales is such a small place you, you, you bump into these people all the time. You know them from international ca um, campaigns and so on. So, yeah, there's, there's no hiding from it. The, the derbies do mean more. It means more to the fans. It means more to the players as well. Especially when you're underdogs, if you're, or if you're classed as underdogs for that game, like Newport were. 
Well, yeah, I think their fans would be probably a bit pissed off in terms of how much coverage Wrexham are getting lately. And they were like, right, we want to do one over on you. And they did, didn't they? So it's a pretty good result. Yeah, it was Especially amazing. going into their next round in the FA Cup, isn't it? So. Yeah, the United game. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, also, on Cardiff City, quickly, if we can, guys. Um, Errol Bullet um, said after the game, he's annoyed about transfers not happening because they've had nobody and well documented to chase a lot of players. Um, his contract's up for, for renewal and that's not been sorted. And he said basically... I may have to leave the club, he said, in a press conference, straight after the game. Reese, is the best time always straight after the game to talk to a manager or should they give him a bit longer? Because he was so, f- he was fuming basically when he came to talk to BBC Sport. Yeah. Was he Turkish? Yeah, Turkish, yeah. So. Hot-headed anyway. Yeah, it could yeah. be hot-headed <laughs> and, um, you, know, you know, emotions are so high after after you've played a game, uh, win or lose, like usually lose, you're, you're a bit more... Um, yeah, you can you can get dragged away with with the emotion of the game. It spills over into the aftermatch, so it's it's quite tough to to, to hold that against him. I think, especially yeah. if culturally he's quite fiery. I don't, I don't. No, he really is. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. Um, you know, maybe take you with a pinch of salt. But um, yeah, he's obviously frustrated with with his situation, the situation of not getting um, not being able to get his sign in. So it's probably just spilled over into his. Uh, um, into his aftermatch thing, I can't see him walking away from his contract. To be honest, he's no, probably no. a bit sketchy this morning, and he thinking, "Oh, I've what have I done?" <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, I mean, social media was full of worry this morning, but the club have come out and said he's not going anywhere. It's fine. Um, and Cardiff City said also nobody's done a lot of business yet. It's been a slow transfer window, so we will do our business in time. But you know, in them situations as players. Um, there was a call for like Joe Rawls and Aaron Ramsey. You've got to step in, talk to the board, make sure he doesn't leave because the fans love Bullet. They don't want to lose him. So would that ever happen? Do you think? Or the players go, "I'm not going nowhere near the board. I'm not talking to anybody." I can't imagine that happening in football. You know, a lot of these boys just want <laughs> yeah. their their weekly paycheck and just be like, "Right, you guys deal with that." You know, the amount of managers they go through in football and, and so forth, they probably just thought, "No, they deal with that themselves." In rugby. I know a few players that will probably go up to the board and be like, we need to get rid of him or Or, so or keep him, yeah. Yep. Reese is looking you at you now that, to you say, know exactly who, who, name a name. <laughs> <laughs> name a shame, so no, can't do that. Okay, cool. I'd, I'd imagine it would happen in football. I think, um, you know, as long as you've been there long enough and maybe you're a homegrown player or something like that and, you know, you know, I know people look at players as, as you know, they just t- chase the money or whatever, but, Players do care. I don't care how much you get paid. You you do care about what you do. And if you've been there long enough, I think, you know, as long as the board know that that player's got the best interest of the club and the whole squad at heart, then, you know, I, I, I would see some players having that, the access to those those people. I wonder it, if De Bruyne would go up to Man City board and be like, we need to get rid of Pep. We've lost <laughs> a couple of games. I don't think so. I don't know about Pep. Pep's untouchable. But, but to touch on what you were saying there, Reese, though, I suppose if you hear about your club going after certain players and you, you naturally think, well, we're in with a chance because there's a connection between the manager and the striker or what have you. There's a chance for us to get them to improve our team. You want that player to come in. So as a player, do you get caught up in that kind of the thought of a player come in? So if you knew that Kathy was going to come play with you, would you get excited about that and then be disappointed if he didn't come? It depends if he's the same position as you or not. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've heard some bad stuff about that guy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I know. It's, it's definitely happened in the past where I've been at a club and maybe played with another player and someone will come up, the coach will come up to me, oh, what do you think of this guy? And then, you know, you give them an honest opinion on, on that player or, or whatever. So I think it's important, more and more people now have to make, you have to make sure that that person fits your club culturally as well. Yeah, yeah. And you need to speak, I think, I think all clubs do it. They won't just go out and just meet that player. They'll ask people who've worked with them in the past, coaches have worked with them, ex-teammates and so on, just to get a, a fuller understanding of what that, that, that person is. Because I think everyone understands now that it's so important that you build a good culture within your, within your club. It's not just about that play and what he can offer on the field. Yeah, it's more about him as a bloke, really. A lot of it, isn't it, now? Especially in rugby, in terms of just fitting the, the way that each rugby club, sort of, well, this is rugby-wise, football might be different, but, you know, they're smaller squads, aren't they, in football? So, yeah, you've got to make sure that they fit in. Yeah, no one wants a bad egg, do they? Kind of disrupting kind of any kind of positivity within a club. It must be the worst thing possible, because you can hear them in corners, maybe, and kind of, does that happen? Can you see cliques forming in dressing rooms? Yeah, I remember being at Exeter once before and, and Rob Baxter down there, he's very shrewd in terms of who he signs and that joins in with obviously what the boys get up to off the field. You know, they're a very big social sort of club and there's a few boys that have signed and not really bought into the, to that social side and they haven't stayed very long. So, okay. um, yeah, it's something they definitely look at. 
Interesting. Okay, let's get Dragon's Bet James Level on now, shall we? And look ahead to the weekend action. James, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, all good. Hi, guys. Good, good. I'm going to start with the same question as always. Um, good or bad weekend for the bookies? Oh, I was all right this week. Don't worry, you can sleep easy. You won a few quid, so uh, it was steak and red wine on Sunday night. Yeah, uh, good, good weekend. Always good weekend as the bookie, isn't it? Oh, not always. <laughs> Trust me. We've had, last weekend was bad, but this weekend we're, we're all good. We're smiling. Um, Newport did his big favour against Wrexham, so that was uh, that was quite handy. I'll be honest, you look like a different person to last week. <laughs> so it must have been good. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Was I stressed? No, I'm only joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, also, with Dragon Bet, of course, you can do lower league betting. So um, how did it go in the lower leagues as well? It was busy this weekend, so it was all the WRU Cup. So we priced up the WRU Cup Championship all the way down to Division 5. There was loads and loads of games going on, but um, it was good stuff. So the traders have told me to mention they got four games exactly right on the handicaps, which takes some doing, must admit, but I'm still giving them a rollicking because they got Bill Wells wrong. They, bet Bill, they had Bill Wells at 3-1. to one. They got best in the 6-4. to four. And uh, yeah, they managed to beat, who are they playing? I can't, can't remember who they beat. The Port uh, Port Harlequins. Wells. Port Harlequins, that's right. Yeah, so they managed to beat Port Harlequins. But um, yeah, that was that was a big one they got wrong, but they did they did pretty well over the weekend. And obviously it's not easy pricing up those games. Yeah, and TNS in the football, the, the cup win, did you kind of win some or lose on that one? And no one bets. They got about ten fans, haven't they? TNS and about one person who bets on them normally. So um, yeah, they were they were big odds on against Swansea Academy. They won five yeah. one. Um, so wasn't exactly exciting stuff. TNS win again. Normal boring stuff. I think. There you go. But this weekend's all about the FA Cup, the magic and the romance of the FA Cup, which we kind of should be really excited for as Welsh football fans because Card- Cardiff are out, so they won't be excited. But otherwise, these are the scheduled games we've got. Um, the TV schedule is a bit weird. They do that, but we won't get into the TV schedule, uh, whether we're happy with it or not. Um, Thursday night, Bournemouth versus Swansea City. Sunday, Newport versus Manchester United. And then Monday night, Blackburn versus Wrexham. Um, Alex and Reese, some potential giant killing this weekend. What do you reckon, Al? Yeah, well, we're obviously trying to get um, what we what we come together two draws, haven't we? With those two games nailed on. So uh, we're thinking Bla- take Wrexham take Blackburn back to their place. Okay, uh, and then we're thinking that Swansea could get a, a nice draw against Bournemouth. So is that going to be your charity bet of the week? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah? We're going to go double uh, on that. Okay, yeah. okay, we'll get into more detail on that then. But what about Newport Man United, Rhys? You know, are you are you a romantic? You played professional sport all your life, right? I, I'll be honest with you. I go for any, any romantic bet. I'm, I'm there, as James will find out over the next, next course of the year. Heart or brain? What kind of rules for you in this moment? Well, I don't know. I, I, I sort of follow Man United anyway, so I think my heart and brain are probably saying uh, United. Yeah, well, that's all right. You can say no, that. My heart saying United. My, my brain might be saying Newport. Um, yeah, it's been <laughs> tough, really tough. Um, you just don't know what you're going to get, but. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that ends up at the draw. Yeah, okay. What about you then, Alex? So you follow your football. Man United, they're not the, they're not the strongest in defence. Seeing Newport play against Wrexham, they could get amongst them and maybe do a shock, surely. Come on. Yeah, well, I think I was, I'd probably part the bus and try and get that away draw if I was if Newport, wouldn't you, in terms of uh, revenue. Going back to Old Trafford would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? But I think United, surely, that pitch is not as bad as it used to be, is it? And No, it's okay, yeah. Um, I, I can imagine them sending a pretty decent team because they're out of every cup other than this one, United. So <laughs> it's their only chance of silverware. <laughs> in a way, though, right, if you're a player, if you get a draw, you'd be chuffed with that, right? Because you get to go play in Old Trafford. Yeah, 100%. Um Oh, like what an occasion for these these boys playing against Man United. I know they're not the the force they once were, but they're still you know one of the biggest clubs in the world. And um, yeah, what what like what an occasion. James, like like Reece here, some of the Newport County boys have said they are Manchester United football fans. Um, it's going to be an amazing <laughs> occasion. How are you looking at it from a point of view from the bookies? Then is there any hope for Newport? Well, I'm likely to be a Man United football fan as well because everyone's going to bet Newport, aren't they? No one's going to bet Man United. They're one to sixteen Man United. Those odds, no one's going to back them. Ten to one the draw, possible. You know, there's there's worse bets. Yeah. Or you can bet twenty five to one Newport County, which is really. I thought when we when we spoke about it last week, I thought they'd be about fourteen to one, but twenty five to one. That's a big price. Uh, never a better time to play Man United than now. Yeah. And they're, and they're yeah. flying high after that Wrexham win. Maybe, flying. They may, maybe have gone too early, I don't yeah. know. But um, 25 to so, 1, very generous. I'm, I'm, 
I know Alex understands odds, so 25 to 1, if you don't understand it, that means if you bet £10, you'll uh, you'll lose £10, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Have you put a minimum bet on that? On that? <laughs> <laughs> no, for those who don't understand, you could win £250 if you go for it, which would be good. Um, okay, so it's, it's a mixed bag here. Uh, what about the odds for Swansea then? They're going to weigh at Bournemouth. Um, how do you see that one going? Big ask again. So Swansea are 10 to 1. For the charity bet, I think, Reese, you said uh, Bournemouth, Swans draw. That's 9 to 2. Four and a half to one, and then Bournemouth a one to four to win. Of course, Ivan Tony's back, causing problem last week. Oh, that's Brentford. No, that's sorry. Brentford. I was going to say. No, they got Nord- Dominic yeah. Solanke. They've got. Do we need to worry about him? Solanke. So, yeah. So they're four on Bournemouth. Uh, nine is to the draw, and ten to one Swans. Okay, and then Monday night, um, Blackburn and Wrexham. How do you see that going? So we've gone four to one Wrexham. They probably would have been a little bit shorter. I suppose they've drifted after the defeat against Newport last weekend. So four to one Wrexham, seven to two, three and a half to one to the draw, and four to seven Blackburn. Do you know what? I think there's there's something in some of these games. So one of the Welsh teams have got to do something. It's just picking the right one, I suppose. Um, for the charity bet, which we mentioned, um, so those of you who didn't hear it last week, so every single week, uh, Dragon Bet are giving us £5 each. So there's two teams. I'm a team on my own. And then Reese and Alex, you're a team this week. And if we get any win-ins, uh, the money will go to charity. And we've got Prostate Cymru and Latch as our charity partners on this. And um, James, there's a reason why Latch as well, isn't there? Yeah, so uh, actually, Reese, I think you were with Christian, my spies tell me you were with Christian Williams this morning, weren't you? I was, yeah. Eyes everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. See, I know. Keep an eye on you. Uh, so Christian, he's a brilliant, brilliant Welsh horse racing trainer. Um, I can talk forever about his talents and what he's done as a, as a racehorse trainer, but um, as a family, they're even better. And they're going through a tough time with their daughter, Betsy. So she's got, um, she's having a few issues and Latcher, a children's charity for cancer. The, the Welsh horse racing community has really got behind them this year. They've raised a lot of money, had a lot of initiatives. And Latch is a great charity anyway. So just, just for the family and for everything Latch does, we'd like to donate some um, some charity bet money towards them. So if you can, I don't often say this, but if you can back a few winner or winner now and again, we'd be, uh, we'd be happy to pay out. Okay, cool. So for clarity then, Reese and Alex, what is the charity bet of the week you're going for? So we're going for, obviously, Wrexham to draw. Yeah. And then you wanted to do a double with the Swans and Bournemouth. Okay, so you're firmly placing the blame on Reese for that. Oh uh, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> I was trying to get, I'm trying to get um, a guarantee of the horses this week, but my mates have got a few runners, but he said none of them are going to win. So okay, well, there's a tip from you then. Yeah, that's my tip. <laughs> yeah, Reese, are you happy with kind of Alex's part of the draw there with the Wrexham draw? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. nailed on now. So, James, what's the odds on that one then? So, so the draw double, I'll have to work that out, but we're going to have about, I'll tell you what, I'll give you about 25 to 1 on that. If you, so, so both teams to draw? Yeah. Yep. Was that right? Yeah, I'll give you 25 to 1. And then you've got, Death, you told me you were going to go for Newport to win. Yeah, I am. Yeah, That I, is I, also 25 to 1. Now, we are trying to raise money for this charity, not just, I know, <laughs> not but just I'm, throw it away. I'm what about just thinking, lose by more than, less than 1? That could be a good one. Do you reckon? I, I do fancy, genuinely, I think they can do it, Newport. I really do. And you'll laugh at me, but if it happens, and I like Man United a lot, mm. do you know what I mean? But I do think if they get amongst them, they get they score first, Man United could just be, nah, we're, we're done with this. So um, Think of the charities, mate. We want to win money. Well, I'm not going to change my bet. You can't, you can't bully me to change my bet, okay? <laughs> no, so don't it's not change your bet. Happen. Right. <laughs> okay, um, so that's our charity bet of the week. Um, any other odds for us to kind of keep an eye out on the app, on the website? Yeah, we've got plenty of odds. We've got a few Louis uh, LRZ specials up, which I thought would be quite interesting. So obviously the shock last week. So um, he's we put him at one to three to make a practice squad. So apparently, um, was it eight of the 13 international players last year made a practice squad? Um, eight, eight, one to three to make the practice squad and we've got him um, at 10 to one to actually get drafted after that. So we don't think he'll get drafted but we do think he'll make a practice squad. Okay, that's interesting, isn't yeah. it? It's what we spoke about, isn't it? Average, yeah. average on six get through. So yeah, one to three, lump on. Yeah, if I was him, I'd put yeah. it better myself as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Okay, I'm happy with that. Um, in terms of Cardiff City, there's been a bit of problems and contro- controversy around Bullet this morning and kind of over the weekend. Um, will he still be there at the end of the championship season? Well, we've actually changed the odds on this. And so just recent, just the last hour, I think, Dalman said that he ain't going anywhere. Yeah. Um, so we've kept him. So we're going to have Bullet at, to be there for the start of next season at four to six and no is 11 to 10. Uh, we had it. We had it the other way around this morning, but I think uh, the statement in the last hour has made a bit of a difference. The traders have lost their bottle. I'm not so sure. I think he's trying to bully Tan, and I don't know how Tan would kind of react to that. Um, 
but yeah, four to six to be there, 11 to 10, not. Questioning in a board, you know, kind of, it's a brave thing to do, isn't it, Reese? Kind of to put the pressure on your board when you're middle of a contract negotiation. It is, yeah. Um, but where are they now? They're just outside the playoffs, they, or a few points behind? Well, I think they're down 13th now, I think, actually. So yeah. they're, they're a bit behind, you know. Champs brutal, and they're like a couple yeah. of bad weeks, and you're down looking below you, and then a couple of good weeks, you're thinking, right, here we go, playoffs. So, um, obviously, yeah, he's he's he's... He's got experience. He, he knows what he, you know, I'm sure he knows what he's doing. <laughs> he'd hope he would. Well, if it gives him an extra couple of quid for his next contract, then uh, maybe uh, it well, could work. Yeah, well played. I think maybe the fear with that bet, James, is that someone else will poach Errol Bullet because he's been very, very impressive. It might be Cardiff fans want him to stay. The board do like him. So hopefully the contract will work. He'll get that extra couple of quid Alex is talking about. But I think we want to watch him being poached as well. So, um, okay, cool. Okay, that, those are the good odds. Anything else in terms of the lower leagues for us to keep an eye out? The game of the week this week? And what, what, what have you got for oh, us? Oh, the game of the week's a good one. I think proper proper Cardiff tear up this is. We've got St. Ilted against the Buns, St. Ilted against St. Albans, which is uh, Division 3 of the West East Central. That'd be a proper scrappy match, wouldn't it? You know, you'd love to go down and watch that. So St. Ilted's are looking for their first win of the season. They're bottom of the league. Okay. But they have had a couple of decent matches recently. I think they drew 27 all to Herbert in the game before last. Uh, and the Buns are about mid-table, but we had them early favourites to win that league. So, um, yeah, that's a proper Cardiff tear-up match that if you're doing nothing, go down and watch that. And I'm sure it'll be plenty of needle. Good one to watch. There you go. I can, I can see the rain lashing down on that one as well and being a messy affair. James, thanks for your wisdom once again this week. We'll catch you next week. Okay, thanks, mate. Cheers, guys. Be lucky. Cheers, mate. Okay, and for you listening, remember all your betting needs are covered from the lower leagues to the top leagues with Dragon Bet, the only place for Welsh sporting fans to bet. So get involved with the bookies that look after Welsh sport, but of course, please gamble responsibly. Okay, and there we go. We come to the end of the pod. Um, Reese, plans for the weekend? I'm not doing a rugby game this weekend, so... Catching up on sleep. Catching up on sleep, yeah, no <laughs> travel. So um, I'm not sure what my plans are. I'm sure I'll find out in due course. Watch some sport. Are you allowed I to would... watch sport in the house or who rules the telly? Yeah, I don't really watch much apart from sport, really. Okay. Um, you know, I try and people try and get me to sit down and watch certain things, but I lose interest pretty quick. So, um, yeah, no, usually sport's on if I'm there in the house. Yeah, good, good. And Alex, what's your plan for the week and the weekend to come? Uh, rest of the week got training and then I've, I'm off at the end of the week I think big weekend of NFL isn't it so yeah. um, that'll be some late nights I think I'll be tackling into that so yeah looking forward to that conference round popcorn yeah. and chicken wings out 49ers here we go happy Back days Reese. thanks for your time Alex thanks for yours as well and it's also been great to have your company at home or wherever you've been listening from today remember we'll be back next Monday for more Sporting Wales chat and you can follow us on Instagram at Sporting Wales pick up the magazine in various sport club gyms leisure centres and lots of other places right across Wales and of course online or subscribe at sporting.wales to have it in your inbox and please click follow wherever you listen to this podcast so it can be delivered to you ASAP every single Monday. Tell your friends about us and share the love and we'll catch you next week. Wherever you go, wherever you are, enjoy your Sporting Wales week. Sporting Wales podcast. Supported by Dragon Bet. Your go-to for Welsh sports news and views.